All right, welcome everyone. I'm gonna do a quick video on how to show you how to swap out the knobs on your bait casting reel. Uh, most times it's for cosmetic use, but sometimes you might need to replace the bearings in there. It is kind of tricky to get the right amount of rotation and also make sure that it's just loose enough to keep that rotation, but not so sloppy and also that your, uh, your knob's not gonna fall off. So keep watching if you wanna see that. Also comment down below if you wanna see other sort of reel tips. All right, the knobs we're gonna be using, these are from Roro. Uh, I got a couple spools, like that's where this spool's from. This is the thick and break model, so it's gonna have a little bit more break. I have my, uh, the standard one, like it's lighter breaking. I have that uh, with some four pound monofilament for the streams. But anyway, um, so these are some wooden knobs. These are pretty light. Uh, I'll post the weight right here. I don't remember right off the top of my head. But for having lightweight wooden knobs that are usually like double the price of this, and it comes with uh, four bearings, so there's two bearings for each knob. So if your reel doesn't have knobs, uh, bearings in the knobs, it's a good way to upgrade it too. It also has the washers and also uh, spacers. So this, these knobs can fit on Shimano and Daiwa reels. So I'm gonna do a bird's eye view for the rest of the video to show you how to do it and some uh, fix some common mistakes that you might run into. So let's do that. All right, so the tools and uh, equipment you're gonna need for, to be able to do this, of course, knobs with the bearings. Uh, lot, most knobs that you buy, even if they're not Roro, uh, they will come with the, uh, the washers, they, a lot of times they won't come with bearings, or extra screws, or the spacers for Shimano or Daiwa. Some oil, you put a little bit of oil on the bearings uh, once you get it done. This tool right here, this is from Roro too, this is pretty inexpensive. Uh, I got this uh, when I ordered my spools. Uh, one good thing about it, see how it has that little hook on the end, that little 90 degree turn? That's a lifesaver. Um, I've tried to get away with using um, like safety pins and screwdrivers, all this other stuff, and I just end up messing up my real knob. So that's what this tool is, is it goes in like this. If you can see that, it goes straight in like this. And it pulls it straight out. That way you're not messing up the ends. I don't know if I have any knobs around that I've messed up, but keeps it nice and clean. So that's, that's what this tool is for. And then you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, the PH1 size, That's it's like kind of a, it's a fine tip as far as like it's not like a micro one or if you have a different screwdriver Just make sure that the screwdriver fits before you put it in there uh, You don't want to a lot of times these from the factory. These are these have Loctite on them. So it's pretty uh, It's pretty um, how would I say it, it can be difficult to get off So if you take your screwdriver make sure it fits first Get in to get a good wiggle test with it There okay, this one wasn't too bad And these screws can be pretty long, so you just have to keep screwing, unscrewing it. It should be good enough for me to get. I'll just use my thumbnail like this just to get it off the end. Okay, it's still on there. And I'm not sure, I don't think this Alphas has knobs, but it's still, I mean, uh, no, it has bushings in here. And this is actually still pretty smooth. Like I'm not doing this out of an operational thing. Like this, this reel out of the box was really, really nice. Like even before I put different spools, bearings and stuff like that in there, but it's always not nice to mess around with gear. So that, that's a bushing. So like, um, I'm not exactly sure. Let's say if this is seven. Yeah. This is like seven bearings plus one, the plus one's anti-reverse. So if you added bearings onto this in, so that'd be eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's where a lot of your uh, the bearing counts lacking. If you see some higher end reels that don't have like 12 plus one bearings, it doesn't really matter too much uh, because most times those bushings are pretty smooth. And a lot of times uh, reels will come with bushings here if they're meant to be in salt uh, salt water. So that's that's why a lot of those like higher end reels might have um, bushings there instead of bearings. So I have that off. Um, Take the other one off real quick. I'm telling you, if there's one thing that you learned from this video, get one of these tools. It's super inexpensive from Roro. It's pretty, it's pretty well built. If you want to get a different brand or if you want to make one yourself out of uh, like some heavy gauge wire, go ahead. But please make something, have it look something like this.
I'm going to take this off. So I also plan on doing uh, um, another modification to this. So I put different bearings in here. I put I have different spools. I have the Thicken and the standard Roro spools along with the stock spool. So that gives me some good, it gives me good options to be able to, uh, if, the, if I'm going for bass, I could use that deeper um, stock spool. If I want to go for uh, like finesse bass, I could use this thickened spool. And then for my thinner one, I use that for trout. Or I could use this for panfish lures too. So I do have, let's see. So on here a lot of times, oh, forgot to mention, yeah, kind of count, or if you can, just leave these bushings on here. Like, if they're not dirty, if you're just doing this, like, a, a clean reel swap out like I'm doing here, I'll leave them on here. It looks like there's two on there. And from here, it's kind of, you just kind of play around to see where that knob wants to sit. Each knob's going to be different. It could even be different. Like, this, like, one post might take two washers down here. So it might just take one. So it's not like there's not anything wrong with it because there's going to be tolerance difference in that in that uh, post, and it's also going to be tolerance differences with the uh, with the knob as well. All right, so all the hardware bearings and stuff are in there. I'm just going to take this knob out of here. But yeah, another upgrade I plan on doing is. Uh, actually have it on the way now from uh, Segisi, uh, Ryan Segisi from Segisi Customs. He, he's mainly in like the Cerakoting weapons and stuff like that, knives. Uh, it's just like a durable coating that a lot of firearms use. She has done real work too. Uh, he has he has not, uh, I guess he doesn't have that open for business. He has done some pretty sweet work on his reels, but he actually made a drag clicking set. So this is a scorpion here. Like, so the drag when it comes out, It'll click like that. Um, he does have those on his website. I can post that down below. Uh, he does have a limited run. He took a took longer than expected, but he wanted to make sure it got right. He's a very detail oriented guy. It seems like so. Um, I'd rather I'd much rather wait a few more weeks for a product than uh, get an inferior product. So I will be doing a video on that too. So I have all the pieces out right there. Okay. We get a knob out. Let's kind of see the difference here. Okay. So if see how it's flared like this, this is going to be the outside. So it'll sit on it like this. I'm just trying to see how deep that goes. I do want to use grease. I will use some of this grease that's on here. I do like grease on my knobs uh, a little bit more than oil. It's kind of a preference. Grease lasts a little bit longer and it just feels slightly smoother. Right, I'm going to pay, I'll, I'll put a picture up. I kind of just thought of this. I'll put a picture up as to like what the, like the blow up of how to assemble it. The, that kind of summarize this video pretty quick. But if you just want to see uh, some issues that I run into sometimes, uh, just keep watching. So you have a washer on there, then you put the bearing on. Let me check the bearing real quick. That's a pretty good quality bearing. You don't need a super high quality bearing. As long as it rotates smoothly, it doesn't really need to rotate super fast at all. So I'll, I'll use these bearings. Let's try and get some of that grease on there. Let me, I'm gonna put this down here just for a second to get that grease in there. The tool here it is. So I did that just to get a little bit of that grease out of there. You don't have to. If you have if you have different grease that you want to use, that's that's fine. If I can get this bearing out of here now, there we go. Okay. So I had that washer on there. Okay, bearing. Oh, that washer stay on there. Nope, that's the this one was right here. Like I said, sometimes you you just gotta play around with it. Let's put that down. And then I'm gonna put my knob on this way. So it looks like there might be a little too much space there. 
might need to that's my only washer on there oh now it fits a little bit better so, oh that's why it fits better the bearing wasn't on there Now, the other bearing, let me get a little bit of that grease from that knob again. See, th this was running pretty good for me, so I don't want to really mess with it. This grease was working good. Let's put a little bit of that grease on there, and then, so it goes on the shaft. Don't try to smash it down there, just gently press. There you go. Okay, oh, let's push it down again. All right, so this is where you can you can play around with uh, how many washers that you're going to need. So now with this though, so I'll, I'll, you definitely need one. Just the um, if you don't, your 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 screw will be all the way tight, and you can have too much uh, space in there. So, but by the looks of this, I might actually be able to get away with not using a washer here. Let me try to show that. Okay. And this, the net, th these caps right here, the kind of, uh, if you can see, they're kind of like a dish. Those go on there because these screws, I noticed, they're tapered. The screws are tapered and they actually have a little torque bit there. So I'm going to have to go get a torque bit to be able to put that on. I was not anticipating that. But I think I can get it on good enough with my fingers for now. Okay, it's going on. So this way that I'm tightening it here, I'm just putting my finger on the screw. That's gonna be a little tight. But I put my finger on the screw and then just rotate the handle and it'll tighten it down uh, fairly tight. You're still gonna need a screwdriver or your, like for this for this knob here, it's a little torque bit. Yeah, it's a little, that's, that's a little tighter than I would like it. it. It will work if you like really tight tolerances. I get, it doesn't spin super free right now. Oh, I have it, but it's smooth. So let me take this off. This is part of that experimenting that you're going to have to do. And these washers make a pretty big difference. I know with a... These washers might be different size. I didn't actually look if they were if they were or not. I'm not sure if they are. I'll have to look. But sometimes uh, real companies will bring will give you different size washers to put on. There you go. So. Definitely down here you want a washer just so that bearing can spin on it. But when you get up here, and I'll show you here, you might have a slight gap between the, the top of your post and the bearing, which that's fine. Because when you when you do that, that'll give you automatically give you your the space that you need. That's what you're that's what you're really looking for. I'll put that on make sure it's not cross threaded. Do this really quick. Let me see how this goes. The bearings are still a little dry. I could have put some of this oil in it, which I probably should have. But that tolerance is nice. That's actually better than stock. It's barely any tolerance. I do have to tighten this a little bit, but I have no issues with this coming loose. Like once I tighten it, yeah, it's actually, it doesn't look too bad either. 
It looks, it looks classy enough, like kind of like a, not quite like cork classy, but that, that looks pretty nice. All right, let's move over here. There's two bearings there. Okay, let me grab this. Now I'm gonna put oil in this one. I'm gonna see what, how that turns out. I'm gonna grab another bearing. Now, if you want these knobs in salt water, just make sure that you don't use the bearings. Make sure that you use the bushings that come with the reel. Uh, that does help from corrosion happening in here with the salt water. It's actually a really good deal. These knobs were, I think they're like $25, like US dollars. And it comes with the bearings and the washers. Well, usually they come with the washers, but the bearings too, like you can spend, I don't know, you probably about ten dollars on knob bearings if you if you wanted to. There's no reason to get anything more than that for because it's not a high RPM, so you don't need those like super tight tolerances at all. Okay, I will put this bearing in now. Let me. Before it gets too deep in there, I'll put the. Actually, I should. I should wait so I don't get oil in the threads. You might just need to get a little wiggle to get it in there. The tighter the bearing fit, the the better. Let me see something quick. This is a little tighter, so I might be able to just press it in. So with this bearing check tool, it just there we go. Seats in there pretty good. A bearing in there, yep. Oh, those are pretty fast. That's actually, that's not too bad. And um, I might actually go back and grease these, but just for the sake of the video, I'll keep it like this. And again, you can do that same trick. Like once you get it threaded in there, then you can just. Just keep your finger on there. You can rotate your handle like this. Keep doing that. And it gets on there. Then you start feel. Well, that's a little tight. I think because I left two two washers underneath here. Let me see here. The wood's cut out pretty straight too. That could be kind of hard to do with wood, especially with the grain going this way. That could be pretty tough. Let me see here. It might be able to, yeah, this is enough. And look at that. The tool can kind of double as a screwdriver. It's not going to get you super tight, but at least you can get it on and off. Okay. I highly recommend having the correct tool. I will get the correct tool to tighten these down. All right. Where do I need to take a washer off? Another thing, this bearing, this bearing might not be all the way seated, but I'm willing to bet it's an extra washer down here. Yep, that one thin, thin washer that can make all the difference. So I'll put this back on here. There we go. I was kind of give it a little press to make sure that bottom. And these bear these so these knobs are really light and they're not really wide so like for them to have that kind of inertia that those are pretty good bearings they're using in there. Kind of surprised. There's usually usually you'd use your more more inexpensive bearings in your uh, in knobs just because they're not like the performance like you don't really need high spec bearings in there as long as they're not sloppy. Oh wow, that's that's really nice. I have to check after I tighten it, but there's barely any not any side to side play. If this one has a little bit more, I think that'll go away once I tighten it, maybe. Or I might be able to put an additional washer in there. That's not bad. This one's perfect. Like I I don't even know if you'd be able to hear that or see it. 
but I can barely feel it. And that thing spins really nice still. So that's it right there. It looks it looks kind of nice with the red and the um, with the wood. One thing I should mention: see how these these part like the part right here, like that uh, where the where the screw sets in. If you specify, make sure you read it. I didn't read it that great, so I ended up getting silver. Silver is the stock color, but they'll actually send you. I think there's red, purple, and um, maybe blue. I'm not sure. But that would have that would have looked really nice if I had the red here with the red there. But um, I did not do that. So if I end up getting another pair of these knobs, I will. Um, I don't know. I'll probably end up uh, changing these out, like ordering red ones and put the red ones on here, that type of stuff. So that was easy as that. And I got some extra. I got some extra spacers for a different reel. So make sure I keep those in a ziplock. And also, just in case you run into like a Daiwa, you know, you find a Daiwa handle and it does like on the Tackle Tour forums, like used or something. Now you got some uh, some screws that you can use for those ends, and now some knobs. So a lot of times, people just sell plain carbon handles. So that's a good way that you be able to save money that way. All right, hopefully you learned something from this video. I'm going to show you one last tip uh, before before I end this video. So with these knobs, let's take the knobs and the uh, the caps just put them into a different different little pouch that the real you know it could be what the knobs came in or a little ziploc bag or something like that that had the screws here too uh, you can use these for any reels or whatever i like to put them back inside the stock box that i took them off of and i close it up that way just in case uh, i end up selling the reel which i don't think i'm going to sell this reel or anything but I know that the parts that go exactly to this reel are right in this box. And then I got the box. I just put the box back there. So hopefully uh, you learned a little bit of reel maintenance and how to maintain your reels that last a long time if you just do your minor maintenance. And like I said, I'm going to be doing that reel clicker. That way this, this sound right here turns into this. That's like my biggest gripe with this reel was, the, was that. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be able to get notified when the uh, when that video drops when I'm doing the drag clicker on here. Super excited for that. Uh, hopefully it's a, it's a pretty simple drop in. It seemed like it from the um, instructions that he has on his website. But yeah, just one more step of uh, customizing this reel.